Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Wild Gamer Appears. I guess we could call this Wild Gamer vs. World of Warcraft, but uh, it's not going to be in the same line as the last series. The last series was more of a test, really, to kind of flesh out my World of Warcraft idea, you know, put some World of Warcraft videos on my channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this World of Warcraft Training Exercises. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I'm doing on Star Trek Online. I'm going to take a character from level 1 and take it to max level. So I have kind of have a decision on the type of character I'm going to play as. i uh, kind of stuck between two races right now. I'm wanting to do either Forsaken or I want to do Torin. Quite honestly, Torin that'd be an interesting idea. You know, the Torin are kinda cool. Um, Forsaken though, they're well they're the Forsaken, they're undead, they're unholy. And they are glorious. Alright, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go with the Forsaken. Um when it comes to character class, I'm heavily leaning towards warrior right now but uh see I've already done a lot of these other character classes I've uh, I've already got a monk out in uh, Pandaria right now uh, I actually have a warlock mage you know uh, you know mages were kind of driving me nuts when Pandaria just before Pandaria got released when they did the update to the classes uh, not keen on priests. I've done rogue a million times. Uh, hunters drive me nuts. And uh, if I want to do a level one through ninety guide, starting off as a death knight does not make sense. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go with warrior. Customize this ugly, ugly mug. Uh, first off, we're gonna choose color. Uh, I can go with radioactive green, radioactive purple, or radioactive blue. Oh. Let's go a little different. I'm gonna do green. Face. Uh, you know what? Can't really do a face when my feature is missing a jaw. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna skip to not missing jaw. And yeah, see, look at all the lovely choices you get. Uh, you know, going a little decrepit would be kinda nice. We'll go with a little decrepit. Now back to face. Alright, we got plenty of faces that only a mother could love. Okay. Kind of a more plain face. Angry face. Rawr. Uh, where's missing lips? Lips missing. Yeah, we'll go with lips missing. Hairstyle. Go with crazy scientist hair. Uh, kind of just normal hair. Mohawk. Mohawk. Completely bald. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? We got... Uh, ugh, I don't even know what to call that. Long-haired hippie. Undead. Oh, uh, well, what the heck. We'll stick with that. Go with a hair color. Thinking, I want to choose something a little closer. There we go. A little closer to blue. Features. Well, we've already messed with that. Alright. Well, as you can see, World of Warcraft is... A much older game, so your customization is going to be very limited. So we'll go ahead. We'll go with Wild Gamer, and let's get in to the Forsaken. This isn't as epic as you'd like it, I know, but we'll continue forward anyways. Though Lady Sylvanas and her Forsaken finally took vengeance upon their hated enemy, the Lich King. Their dark crusade in Northrend proved costly. Betrayed by Grand Apothecary Putrus at the Battle of Wrathgate, the Forsaken's devious plague of death was unleashed upon both the Alliance and the Horde to calamitous effect. Unbeknownst to Sylvanas, Putrus and his demonic ally, Veramathras, had taken control of the Undercity. As a result, the Forsaken were wrongly blamed for the traitor's atrocities. Though the Undercity was eventually retaken, Sylvanas and her followers still bear the weight of Putra's sins. Mistrusted by the other members of the Horde, the Forsaken must now prove their loyalty to the cause and redeem themselves from their supposed treachery. 
To this end, Sylvanas has bolstered her defenses within the Tyrus Fall Glades and readied her undead forces for any contingency. As one of the Forsaken, you must use your cunning and viciousness to slay any who would pose a threat to Sylvanas's rule, be they human, undead, or otherwise. Oh dear. Sounds like the Forsaken are a lovely little bunch. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys a little bit of my setup. I'm not crazy, as some of the other players probably are. So uh, let's go ahead. Uh, first off, I hate helmets. I've explained it in my Star Trek, or in some of my other videos, somewhere along the line. I don't like helmets, because I spent the time to customize the character's face. I wanted to show my face. Alright, now what I do is I also implement bottom left action bars and the bottom right action bars. As you can see here. So, and I also lock them so that if for some reason you accidentally click on something down here, you don't want it to go, you know, fly away. So, now what I do though is I do implement a pickup key though, so that if you do want to move something around, you do have the option, and more likely you won't do it by accident. I set it to the shift key so when I hold shift, click, move. There we go, and hit OK, and there we go. So, Forsaken are lovely people. Why are the Forsaken lovely people? Well, they have some interesting qualities. First off, they have this racial ability called Cannibalize. Activated, you regenerate 7% of total health, and only works on humanoid or undead corpses within 5 yards. Disturbing. Uh, this is a lovely ability. Uh, Forsaken seem to be good for PvP because of this, which PvP is player versus player. This removes any charm, fear, and sleep effects. So if someone throws a fear at you and you start running around like a crazy maniac, you can hit that and you're good. You're fine. Battle fatigue. Dealing damage to another player in battle causes them to receive 15% less healing. And... Get your shadow resistance, reduce the shadow damage. Alright, whatever. Touch of the grave, your attacks and damaging spells have a chance to drain the target, dealing 24 di shadow damage and healing you for the same amount. That's good for leveling as well. Enough about that. Let's go ahead and let's get into the game and start leveling. I live! <laughs> Alright, so, questing in this game. Unlike Star Trek, where you got person's face, words, and sometimes where they talk, you pretty much just got the words. You don't even have a... You got a little portrait here, but that's it. So in World of Warcraft, you take like... You look at five seconds of what you're doing. And then you're pretty much... You're like, okay, whatever. So let's talk to this guy here. Give me some experience, thank you. And the first thing you have to do, really, is just go down here and grab some random junk. Not a very exciting start to your gameplay, is it? Not really. But, uh, well, whatever. It teaches you how to do your first fetch quest, which is grab the random junk that the person's asking for. In which case, everything is on this table here. Just the two little items. Now, unlike Star Trek, you do not have... A run key. So this is pretty much your speed until you want to either unlock some other abilities that your uh, character class can use to increase your speed, or you get a mount. I'll handle mounts later when you hit level 20. Thank you. Yes, exactly what I needed. All right, and now here's your first kill quest. Kill six mindless zombies, and of course the first quest where you get stuff. Now. A lot of people who might be watching this who play World of Warcraft might wonder why am I not using any heirloom gear because I think that's going to detract from the experience of these videos. Might join a guild, but I'm not going to help this character out in any separate way with any of my other characters or trades or, well, you know, I might do a trade if someone offers, but I'm not going to help myself pretty much. So here we go. Okay. And you might be able to see here on the mini map, this is pretty much your general area of where your quest is going to be at, where your objectives are, what you need to kill, what you need to collect, and things like that. Now this is a 
similar to a fetch quest. What this does is you just gotta go talk to three people and talk to him again. 